Oh. He calls this cleaning up. My mom, she started vacuuming. Please help! Help me! Help! Help! Please! It really is weird. How's it possible a vacuum cleaner can take all that dust in and none of it gets back out? Oh, come on. It's simple. They taught us about it way back in third grade of Pixie School. You can think of a vacuum cleaner as nothing more than a fan with a net. The fan spins backwards, so it sucks in air with dust and dirt. If you put a net in front of the fan, the net will catch everything that is in the air and let the air pass through. Then all you need to do is add a pipe and you've got yourself a vacuum cleaner. But instead of a net, vacuum cleaners use special bags to collect the dust and dirt. It's as simple as that. Oh, whoa, Simka. Uh, no, like, could he get sucked into the vacuum? Oh, no! Did he stay back there? Tom Thomas, what's the matter? Uh, uh, Mom, I can, I can, I can finish vacuuming you. I'm, I mean, for you. All right. I'll go clean the dishes. No lick. No lick. No lick. No lick. No lick. We better go and get help right away. <laughs> Masya! Masya! No lick got sucked up inside the vacuum. It's impossible. He can't fit in here. No, not in this vacuum. Into the big one, the human. It's just terrible. Nolik, my Nolik, he could suffocate in there. Come on, quickly. Yep. <laughs> this dust is just awful. And it's awfully bad for you, too. Dust is a tiny enemy. It's so small and unnoticeable. But if dust gets inside machines and appliances, it's a disaster just waiting to happen. It can keep gears from turning properly. Dust can make appliances overheat. And if dust gets onto electric contacts, it can create a short circuit that can even cause a fire. That's why we fixies have to constantly clean the insides of appliances from dust. Even though a lot of us are allergic to it. He he ha choo! If only people would just dust a little more often than they do right now. Ha, 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 choo! At least people could dust more on the outside. That would make our work so much easier. And their equipment would break a whole lot less often. Well, did you find him? No! It's all my fault. My mom asked me to clean up my toys, and I didn't just do it like she asked. Now it sucked him in because of me. No lick. No lick. Achoo! So what do you say, Tom Thomas? Achoo! What? I already apologized. <laughs> And I already promised to clean up my toys. And why are you sneezing? To keep you company. So you'd feel a little better. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you say, Professor? It couldn't be any more accurate. Our manipulator works just perfectly. Good! So that means that we're free to go. Great. See you later. All right, finally. Now it's our turn to experiment with that manipulator. 
And do you know how to operate this m manipulator? <laughs> Why do you think we were spying? A manipulator is a kind of mechanical arm that people use for difficult or dangerous work. To control a manipulator, humans use a remote control or a joystick. The operator gives the command, and the mechanical arm grabs and moves the load. Some robotic manipulators don't even need to be steered by an operator. They're controlled by computers and can work without people being there at all, even on the moon. Huh. What is this button for? Uh-huh. How about this one? Uh-huh. Would you like to take a ride right now? Uh, you're scared. Scared? <laughs> Not one bit. Then off we go. Yeah, cool. Ha, this is totally awesome. Well, hang on. This is going to get even awesomer. Professor? Hmm, strange. What made this ladder just fall over? Ah! Am I crazy? Or is someone here? Oh, calm down. Calm down now. Poor Elisa. Yeah, you're completely overworked. you out of there. My compact's gone. Oh dear, what's going on? Ah! Stop this nonsense right now or I'll call the police on you. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in... Ah! Where are you pulling me? I'm going to faint. I'm warning you. That's all. Goodbye. Throughout the world, humans use manipulators for all sorts of work. In factories, manipulators are used to lift and move heavy loads. They can also hand out the parts needed for assembly or even attach these parts themselves. In hospitals, more precise manipulators are used by doctors to help perform operations. Manipulators are also used in places where the work is simply too dangerous for people. For instance, where there are deadly chemicals, or places where humans can't get to easily. Like somewhere underground where there isn't enough space to move, or deep under the water. Or in outer space where there's absolutely no <laughs> air to breathe. So you see, mechanical arms are helpful in all sorts of places where humans are unable to reach things with their own arms. Hang on, Nolik. How can I get that thing open? Ugh, oh, I got it! Yes? Who's there? Ah! What's going on? Ah! Ah! Nolik? What are you doing in there? Achoo! We just <laughs> took a little test flight. Is this yours? attacked by a crazy arm. The manipulator. <laughs> it's your imagination. Look, it's come back. Stop. Stop, I'm telling you. Professor Eugenius, it heard what you just said. Calm down. It's okay. It was a little malfunction, but I took care of it. You are just astounding. And don't think that I'm through with you. With me? With you? <laughs> no, no, with the manipulator. Let's go, Elisa. Yeah, let's go, Professor. Great job, fire. And why fire? <laughs> Can you believe that pixies are such itty-bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features.
coast is clear. The humans have left. Come on, let's go. Masia, why are the fish looking so tired? Because they're not getting enough air in there. The water in the aquarium is dirty and it needs air, but the filter isn't working. The filter? Yes, that device over there. These fish need our help, and if we don't do something right now, they could die. Right. First, I'll fix that light, while you and Masia go over there and see what is wrong with the filter. But I want to go and look at the filter, too. You're too small for this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're a giant. I mean, you're like six feet tall, huh? That's enough arguing. No lick. Let's go. Well, let's check it. Not working. Nolik, where are you? I'm up here. What are you doing up there? Nothing. Holding on. We don't have time for that. Get down. We have to get this switch working. <laughs> Marcia, what's the matter with the filter? Well, probably something's caught inside and it's stopping the motor from turning. A filter is used to keep the aquarium water clean. A motor in a filter turns the paddles and pumps water through a fine net or a sponge. The dirt in the water gets trapped in there and the cleaned water is put back into the aquarium. Many filters not only clean the water but also add air to it so there will be more oxygen in the water. You see, even though fish live their lives in water, they need oxygen just like all of us. of ways for people to breathe underwater. As an experiment, try putting an empty glass upside down in water and you'll see that some of the air stays in there. That's the idea behind the ancient diving bell. An empty bell was lowered under the water and some of the air remained in there for the diver to breathe. And about 200 years ago, the first diving suits were invented. The diver got air from a hose that started above the water. This let the diver spend a long time under the water and even walk around on the bottom, but just not too far. Later on, people learned to squeeze a lot of air inside of metal tanks, and that's when scuba diving started. Scuba divers breathe the air stored in these tanks so they can swim freely and even dive deep down below the water. Our work is done. The light is on and the filter is working. And the fish look so excited! As if they're not fish, but monsters. Thank goodness they're behind glass. <gasps> Papus! Just hang on! We'll be right there to save you! <sighs> but I don't even have my pack a mat Ooh, look how they're chopping their teeth! They must be so hungry! You're right! They're hungry! Nolik, come on! <laughs> fish. They're so ungrateful. We went ahead and fixed their filter, and all they wanted to do was gobble us up. And I'm the one who saved you from them. I was the one watching what was going on. Whoop. <gasps> oh, gee. Hold it. Do you think giving her some uh, food will help? 
As long as you're not thinking that food is me. Pixies go to Pixie schools and study to be masters. There's so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a Pixie, please don't let the secret out. Secret out. Shh. The drum. Now, let's turn it on. It's buzzing. You hear it? I would love to. But the only thing I can hear is Nolik's banging. Nolik, what are you doing? I'm rehearsing my solo. Nolik's the drummer in our rock band. Didn't you know that? Why don't you go and rehearse somewhere else, if you wouldn't mind? Yeah, all right. I just can't work like this. No, like, stop it, please. Oh, my head is just splitting. Professor Eugenius, will you come to the laboratory? There's something very strange in there. What? I'm hearing some kind of awful sound. You are? I think it's a ghost. Back from the dead. Don't you worry about ghosts, Lisa. I'll check what it is. Hmm. So it's you making the racket. What? I'm just rehearsing. Well, what is it? Uh, don't worry. It's just a piece of equipment rattling. You know what you should do? You should go and practice back at home, my young friend. It's not very hard to make a drum. One way to make it is to take an empty barrel and replace its bottom with a skin made of leather or plastic. If the skin is stretched tightly, the sound can get very bright and loud. Really big drums are usually played with percussion mallets or beaters, while smaller drums can be played with sticks or with bare hands. Instruments that make sounds by being shaken, scraped, or beaten are all called percussion instruments. There are lots of different percussion instruments, like the small hand drums that are called bongos, big shakers with handles called maracas, cymbals made out of metal. Now those really make a lot of noise. And there's tambourines, ratchets, and even spoons. That's right! People can make music using spoons as a percussion instrument. Tom Thomas, do you think I could practice my drumming here? Yeah. Go ahead. I've just got some homework to do.
Can you hear that? It stopped buzzing. It did. Hey, everybody, it's Nolik. Yo, what's up? So, our noisy ghost is back. I thought you were practicing at home now. Tom Thomas is drumming there. I had to run away. Well, our excursion is over. And now I would just be so happy to listen to your rock group.